In today's episode of Pioneers, we're having a conversation with filmmaker and creative Nico Verhoeven. Nico is someone we've really enjoyed working with in the past and someone who inspires us with his skills and way of thinking. He's currently working on projects like Tomorrowland and Porsche Carrera Cup Benelux, and he's on his way to establish himself with his work. This is Pioneers, a podcast where the two founders of Antiwave sit down to have a conversation with unique and innovative people, giving these people a platform to tell their story and giving you the knowledge to improve in your endeavors. Enjoy listening to Pioneers. Welcome to Pioneers. We're your hosts, Luc de Bruyne and Jules de Bruyne from Antiwaves. And today we're here with Nico Verhoeven. Nico, how are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good, actually. Nice. Nice. Yeah, good to hear. Good to hear. What are you up to, so? Uh, well, besides that, my uh, last year of my um, study started. I'm uh, working a lot besides that and uh, working on some interesting projects, actually. Nice. And uh, I got a pretty big deal with uh, Porsche Carrera Benelux this year that uh, awesome. makes it possible for me to uh, film like every other weekend at the moment. So pretty busy. That's nice. that's crazy cool. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Good to hear. Yeah, good to hear. Yeah, yeah. A lot of I've seen a lot of stuff lately from you, and it's actually looking pretty awesome. So uh, yeah, I think there's gonna be a cool, might be a cool year for you also. Um, so maybe uh, we'll we'll dive into it with the first question. Um, also, you you know we used to study together in uh, Tilburg, and but that was actually more directed towards uh, maybe event management and communication. But yeah. at some point, you obviously made the decision to, you know, go more into filmmaking and uh, also study that and, and yeah, work in that. And mm. what kind of drove you to make that switch? And, you know, when was the time that you thought, OK, this is actually the thing that I wanted to do for a career or something? Yeah, well, it, it, it's actually funny because I've been like to both of your guys. Uh, yeah, true. Schools, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, true. Thought about it. Because yeah. we were like in first years in Tilburg uh, studying event management. Yeah. And before that, like after my high school, I did a lot of things in that industry, mm. uh, and still till this day did a lot uh, projects for that industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, during the first year, I also thought like, okay, maybe it's not like the side I want to be on. Yeah. Because it was like the management side uh, orientated and. I think it's fun and all, but I didn't see me doing it for like uh, the rest of my life. Mm, Not yeah, that I see sense. me doing like one thing for the rest of my life. I'm for sure I'm going to switch halfway or <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah. But um, we had like one class, I think, and it was more like uh, creating like stuff. And then I was like, okay, this this seems like a lot more fun to do actually. And then, uh, then I ended up like doing the other city like communication multimedia design and it's more mm-hmm. oriented mm-hmm. to creating the stuff instead of the management sites behind it yeah and, and that really drove me to uh, back to maastricht actually awesome. and uh, yeah. now i'm here already in my last year and really uh, flew by nice nice so you're really enjoying it and and you also think this is the kind of this is the direction you see or you see yourself working in for uh, a couple years still or you know uh, the the filmmaking thing that you're doing now yeah the filmmaking actually happened like uh a year ago really or like one and a half years ago it really mm-hmm. stopped picking up because i always I, when i was younger i did it on high school i did some stuff but n- never was really serious with it or anything and then it just sort of happened and it especially because you tell people you're doing it or mm. you make pictures you're showing it online and people pick it up eventually and they're like ah maybe you can do this and this yeah and uh, i'm always really up for like a new challenge so yeah eventually like went in a kind of roller coaster and then it accelerated and then that's pretty now cool. it's my main thing eventually yeah. but I really, really, really cool. enjoy doing it because you can um, the most important part I think is that I can tell a story and I don't really care on like what uh, what media I use uh-huh. but I know from myself because I'm dyslectic I'm really bad but like words and everything <laughs> that's the way I gotta go so yeah. eventually you end up with like photography or film or whatever 
to tell a story yeah that's really cool yeah that's actually really cool and also what I, what i um have to think of now that um it 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 seems to me like also the 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 study that we uh did then in in Tilburg, uh we were both in the first uh, year I think of that that study and uh, it felt to me always like uh, this study was kind of a uh, kind of a setup for a kind of a still exploring what you still wanted to do because I know afterwards a lot of people went into different directions because also in the first year you got a lot of different kind of uh, disciplines so you were uh, doing uh, really creative stuff but also really you know communication management type of things and then i felt like everyone still was kind of discovering what was kind of their thing and then eventually went also different paths and i think that's actually really cool you know yeah so yeah so now you're still studying at uh, your in your last year of your um your studies then you said right yeah. um so this this study is more focused on creative stuff and creative disciplines so what would you say is um uh, helped you with, uh, or how how does th that this does this study help you with your um, filmmaking right now, or how does mm. it block you in any way what you are doing uh, besides school? Um, Is that something you can relate yeah. to, uh, elaborate on? I think like it helps because sometimes you have like uh, assignments um, to do and. You have like a little bit uh, of a time schedule to hold on. They, uh, they're, they're just deadlines, basically. You need to do mm. stuff and you cannot stay in like the thinking phase of, oh, I can do this, oh, I can do that. And mm. there are other people uh, that can help you, not necessarily only like, um, uh, like the mentors from school or whatever, but also like uh, your fellow students. Mm like did something else or know something about a program that they already explored on their own and can uh, help you with it or just like um, telling each other e your ideas and then just uh, trying to figure out what it is what you want to get out of it I guess. Mm -hmm. So in that way it's more the connections you have with people or with the peers, people you yeah. Yeah, yeah, with your peers, it's like having you can talk to you them. You can uh, brainstorm your ideas with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the most important part, I think, because also sometimes you get assignments, and because like they always have like criteria, and sometimes the criteria like make it harder to do the idea you want to do. So then mm -hmm. I think sometimes it also holds you back in the things that you maybe wanted to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and, so, and I, oh, sorry, go ahead. So would you say that um, the things that you are doing right now in filmmaking or other creative disciplines, are, um, would you be able to achieve them if you um, didn't study what you do right now? Or? Yeah, for sure. Okay, I so... Don't, I, I don't think you, you, uh, study is like the way to learn a program. I mean, mm. they can tell you everything about it or tell you how to uh, make films and eventually, of course, you learn a lot of it, yeah. like analyzing this stuff and a bit of the storytelling. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. But I think especially in like a discipline like this, you just need to do it many a times. Lot. Yeah. 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 Oh, Put in well, the again, yeah. really get the hang of it. And I don't think you necessarily need to study for it. Then, but it's also it's really common for us like to go study because everybody been told to do it. Um, but I think it's not necessarily anymore, especially mm. like with the internet and everything's just being online. Yeah. 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 Would you yeah, say you, you see it, okay, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Would you say also you, you learned a lot through, uh, the internet or watching stuff on the internet? Oh yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like most things you eventually, uh, see somewhere or you have an idea and you're like okay maybe someone else did it before or maybe there's something online I can it can help me because like um, the internet is like asking fucking 10 million people, yeah, people of yeah. just asking like one person that knows a lot but never gonna know like the exact thing you need to know yeah yeah that's yeah, true. true so true. knowing true. how to do it is one thing and then mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is like the internet you can get new things in there yeah, yeah. pretty cool 
Yeah, pretty cool. And also I, uh, on the on the aspect of uh, that, it can be helpful also to be uh, in college or, or uh, to have your peers around you. I think it's it, it it is still very important maybe to have like some sort of community uh, of people that can can help you in in uh, in any way what you're doing because that might be really helpful. You know, asking like you say, asking for feedback or, or uh, that type of stuff on your material but i think you know that that isn't in your case that uh, definitely uh, you get that on on college or when you're studying um but you know that can be in in all sorts of ways you know maybe that can be on in the internet or some people you find through you know just the uh, doing it but i think yeah that aspect is also uh, definitely important you know having, having that community with you but yeah cool no. it's also the thing i miss the most actually during like the whole uh COVID part and mm. everything needing to go online because it's just not the same, especially in like a discipline like this, because normally you have like college and people just need to learn stuff and everything and just mm. consume and you really miss like the, the part that you can just, even the fucking little things as like having the conversation at the coffee machine and <laughs> talking about yeah. the idea you have like, oh no, I'm working on this and yeah. Maybe you know bouncing ideas. Yeah, you yeah. Don't have that like in a fucking Zoom talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, you're definitely right. There is right. no coffee machine in there. <laughs> there no machine. Like everybody just pauses and then it's pause. What, when class continues, yeah. you go back yeah. online. Again, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's funny how you you um, d discover or you uh, you see what kind of what makes then the difference like you say okay the, all those little things and then you never think about it that way and then you don't have them anymore because you just like you say you pause the zoom call you, you get a coffee but then you don't have those little talks and, and 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 you know bouncing feedback or some some of that stuff in between and then you you actually notice okay hey, that's that was actually really chill to have you know really nice to have mm -hmm. yeah 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 Cool. Um, so also, you know, like you already uh, said in the beginning a little bit, right now you're working with actually re some really cool uh, brands. Uh, it's like, you know, Tomorrowland and, and Porsche Carrera, uh, the Benelux Cup. And, uh, it, you know, we, we thought um, we wanted to ask, you know, how you eventually got to uh, work with some of those uh, brands, you know, building your way uh, up there. And uh, if you also would have some tips for uh, people that are maybe listening and also want to uh, do the type of work uh, that you are doing. And, you know, you, maybe you might have some tips for them to get on that same uh, level or network their way up to or work their way up to that level. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's a good one, actually, because uh, mm. it was never like a thing I intended to. I mm. never thought I, I'm going to go work for Tomorrowland because no. I, I knew about the festival, of course, it, but it was always like, oh, man, it's like such a big thing. Uh. Why the fuck would they want me? Or something? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so it never was like a possibility I thought about. And um, it just actually, it, it just happened because um, you just meet people, you talk with them about what you're doing and everything, and they'll eventually remember. And like, um, all of a sudden, like a possibility comes up from somewhere in your network that you didn't even knew was there. And then mm. it just lays there and then if you get the chance, then you just need to grab it. And w once you're doing it, just be you, I guess, just be the yeah, more yeah. chill person you can be. And I sure. think especially like as a freelancer, mm. uh, just be chill to work with. Because yeah. like, of course, there's going to be other people that can be better programmers or whatever. But if they're not chill to work with, then mm. yeah. they can like get somebody else next yeah. time. Yeah. 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 And... Yeah. That's if it happens like that, it just comes naturally, I guess. And yeah. it, the thing with Tomorrowland was actually because uh, a friend of mine, also my roommate at the time, mm. um, he, his sister was working at like uh, a bar here in the city and the owner of the bar, like he worked on a position in Tomorrowland, but mm. because he... Um, he got the bar from his parents and now really got busy with it and he didn't want like to leave uh three weeks full time every year and then he was like okay i'm I gonna stop with what i'm doing there mm. uh, but i need somebody to take over the position 
and then it eventually like came to me and I had a talk with him and he was like, oh no, I think, I think you can do it. Cause it was like something I never done before. And <laughs> I, awesome. I knew like, so I, it, it seemed like something that could be done. And I was like, okay, no, I can figure this out, I guess. And if you say so, I can do it and then it should be fine. <laughs> and uh, eventually from that conversation, I had a conversation with like the, the head of risk of uh, Tomorrowland and He's the one that controls like all the things inside of the event control center. Mm. And we had a chat and he was like, you know what? Um, I also still got like four or five other people uh, asking for this place. Um, and also like people that really did that for like a job as a living already for like uh, Ping Pop or uh, some other pretty uh, big festivals. But he was like, uh, but I, I have a good feeling with you and I don't want to want to yeah. stretch it out too long, you know, at, and, <laughs> uh, cool. Mike so says cool. you can do it, then, yeah. uh, then we'll just go for it. Yeah. And cool. uh, <laughs> it was like a really intense week the first time I got there, because uh, uh, it was all new for me, but uh, it was so worth it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. That's so cool to hear actually. And also uh, I think um, uh, there might be some, that, that that's really cool that you say that because Actually, you hear that from a lot of people, uh, in especially in, in the creative industries and stuff like that. Like, uh, obviously, it matters the quality of work that you deliver, but then uh, it it matters even more, or just as much, or even more, just how, how uh, what, what type of person you are and how relaxed you are, and just you know if you're a good person to work with, because that's also and and that might be even true in in your case, in this exact case, like if someone just has like a good feeling with you and and that's and they're like yeah I, I i trust you i think you can do this thing then you know that that matters even more than all the things you've done before you know and and then you get the job or you get the thing that you're trying to strive for and that's yeah i think that's a really cool attitude to go into this like creative business anyway yeah i think that's really yeah. helpful for for listeners as well yeah good yeah. tip good tip yeah. yeah just like everybody you meet just be nice like and be nice. You never know. <laughs> Seriously, you never know. Like when they have something that you can work on for them. Yeah. 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 yeah true. True. And um, that also was, was like the case with the Carrera Cup thing, because mm -hmm. uh, like a friend of mine, he works there. Of like, or like it's somebody I knew from uh, my student association, um, and he knew I was doing a bit with video. So he asked me like at the beginning of this year, fun, hey, we have like, um, we have a start of a year conference and we need like a video of uh, two minutes from like last season. And it was like 40 hours of uh, <laughs> video footage. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, that sounds like fun. <laughs> um, I really like, put in the time and the effort to make that video and then uh, eventually the guys that uh, organized the cup, they were like, oh, okay, this looks like this is really nice. Could you yeah. like send us an invoice if you're going to come with us for the whole season? Yeah. So it happened just like, first of all, have the connections with people, be chill to work with yeah. and uh, just deliver. Yeah. Basically. yeah. Awesome. Great tips. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah. So, so we know you're really ambitious and uh, and driven if it comes to to filmmaking, and other creative stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. So, where would you see yourself in, say, five years from now? Then. Well, I found it a really hard to answer actually, because <laughs> I'm normally like the there always pops like something on my path. Yeah. Um. I I always had like the mentality. Okay, I stay flexible. So when something pops up, I can jump on it. Mm -hmm. uh, that for me worked out pretty okay I, I gotta say mm -hmm. uh, but especially like getting to um, to the point that like next year I'll be done and then mm. I got like a lot more time on my hands and I just need to start uh, making money for a living I guess mm -hmm. and um, but I, I think I'm trying to get myself in a position for at at least for next year to have like uh, an income stream that is consistent. So like from events that come back every year. Yeah. Like the Carrera Cup is like a seasonal thing. They got like many um, 
competitions during the year. And uh, the Tomorrowland thing is also reoccurring when it finally gets back up and running. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. from there on, I think um, I'll I'll use the other t- the spare time I have to uh, get new projects and yeah. uh, produce some bigger ones. And just see what happens. <laughs> and then we'll see what happens. And <laughs> I don't have like an exact thing I want to be in five years, but. Uh, Mm. there are still a lot of projects i want i want to try out and, yeah yeah i also like I like that part is, is that i can travel with what i'm doing see yeah. new place maybe yeah. new people yeah. and uh whatever that will be that that can provide that then then i'm fine with it but i mm. think it should be fun cool yeah. yeah i like i like that mentality a lot because it's like uh i don't know it's not it's not having any big goals but just like projects you you uh, want to do still and then also like you say being flexible i think is gonna also help you then in, to achieve those projects because you know if you're stuck with something really big or with with a lot of stuff and then something comes up that you actually really want to do but but you don't have any time or or just you know you can't work on it that's would also be a pity you know and and now you're just like okay i I put myself in a position where I just can work and, and if some projects come up, then I'll jump on them and, and see what happens. You know, that's actually a cool attitude though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not, I don't think it's something you can control mm-hmm. necessarily. Of course, you can like uh, make choices that go more to a certain direction. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's also something that just comes to you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we should not say that you, because obviously if you work freelance, it's it's harder to control the, the stream of income. Um, would you never go work for some studio or, or some place where you can just get your salary every month? And then... Yeah, no. Well, uh, of course it has its benefits. You know, like, okay, at the end of the month, I get uh, X amount of money mm. because I worked X amount of hours. Um but I have the feeling you're not really going to be in like, you're going to be paid for your time eventually mm-hmm. instead of like paid for the skills that you have mm. or input you have into the company. And I think yeah, it's more valuable to grow with a company than to grow for a company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, of course, I thought like uh, after when I'm done with studying, I'm going to work at a company but i always knew like if i would do that i would do it like part-time i would do it like two or three times a week max yeah. so you always have like a, a steady income and you always still have like the time to explore yeah yeah, yeah and, and build up your own thing too because then yeah. if, if that's what you're known for in the end i think you can get a lot of uh maybe more cool projects uh, out of that you know if if people really come to you for your for your specific kind of uh, uh creative touch to things instead of going to the company for your time you know to work on on a project obviously yeah, yeah. dope yeah that's pretty cool man that's pretty cool maybe uh yeah one one last uh, uh question uh, we often ask at the end of uh, this this podcast like what would be your uh, best advice uh, to every starting filmmaker or creative in in the industry that you're in uh, who's out there and and who's trying to make some waves you know with the things he or she is doing uh, and what what would you say are some uh, yeah is some advice for for those people that are starting out um okay my best advice is uh, is it, I think it's got to be do the thing you love, do mm-hmm. the thing that really makes you uh, excited for a project. Because uh, that that was always the mindset I was going for. I only did the project. I really thought like, okay, cool. This this is like a challenge, but I think it's a challenge that's achievable. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially in the beginning, you you won't you won't be known. Um, people maybe just see your work they, they don't know you're gonna want to do professionally you know, or whatever just reach out to people you know that are doing something interesting you love and um, say hey I can provide you this um, and I can work on my portfolio mm. it was the same like with the video we made I was like okay I really believe in your guys product uh, and I think it would be a cool touch to work together mm-hmm. especially if you get to 
meet a lot of other creatives and that's always like a, a great thing yeah. that's that's the thing i actually gonna miss the most for when i'm done with uh, studying because then you don't really have that place anymore so i'm also mm -hmm. thinking about um something of a creative hub like with other people yeah also like they can everybody can still work freelance but they still are in a space together or get together and yeah. work on uh, ideas especially that's yeah cool. yeah great advice yeah. Yeah. nice nice well uh, nico actually thanks a lot for uh, for all your time and and uh, the story and the knowledge that you've shared with us uh, i think we're definitely going to see uh, in the future probably working on on projects and and maybe sharing uh, some knowledge and stuff uh, but yeah thanks a lot for your uh, time today thanks for listening for more episodes check out antiwaves.com